Hi everybody, it's CycleCamp and today we're going to disassemble and clean the internals of the model 1978-81 Vetterli. This is a Swiss rifle in 41 caliber. It's actually 10 point something millimeter, but they, everybody calls it a 41. This is a very unusual uh, weapon. It's pretty old and uh, at the time it was produced this was the most modern rifle in Europe during the time of its production. Uh, it is a it is a, a gate loading uh, repeater. It's a bolt action, but it actually has a tube, an internal magazine tube. Inside, it can hold 12 rounds of the uh, 41 Swiss rimfire ammunition. So it's a very unusual gun. It has an, uh, an interesting uh, action. Uh, I think I can show you this here when you when you open it up and pop it, you notice this piece that pops up, that's the elevator that's bringing the next round up to be fed into the chamber. So the, the uh, shells, you know, come back through the tube, this elevator grabs them and brings them up, and then when you push forward, you're in the elevator. And the, and the you can see this protrusion on the back is cocked now, you can uh, decock it, show you what it looks like in the decocked position. So we're going to take this apart today and uh, clean up some of the internals. Uh, hopefully this won't be a terribly long video. I'll try to skip the, the really boring parts. I've already rotted out the barrel and we'll talk about the barrel later. Um, while this gun is a labeled, uh, if you saw my other video, this gun is actually labeled down here as a Model 78. I'll bring that up a little higher so you can see it. Uh, while this gun is labeled as a Model 78, it actually has the Model 81 rear sight. So this actually is a Model 81. Uh, apparently the Swiss used the Model 78 stamps for a while while they were making the 81s. They just didn't switch over and start stamping them as 81s. Okay, so we're going to start with the action. Sorry, I forgot my tools. Sorry about that. So again, because we're working on guns, we go get our hollow ground screwdriver set. I use a Winchester set, works very well, very happy with it. And, um, and basically the trick here is you always use the absolute largest bit you can use that actually goes down into the screw head. So in order to take this apart, first you remove the side screw. And this side screw holds holds the action. And again, I lay out my parts in the order I take them out. And then you can remove. Uh, I think you can remove the elevator assembly. So this is the elevator assembly, and you can see this is. I don't know how well you can see it, but this is it's it's pretty cruddy. It's not real bad though. You, you know, not for gun this age. It's really not in horribly bad shape. That's how you get rid of that. And then. In order to get the bolt out, the bolt's a little tougher. So what they did with the bolt is, you can see on both sides here, there's actually a cross pin across the top of this. And you actually have to move the cross pin. And uh, Some guns it's real hard. This gun it's pretty easy. I can just pop it out with the screwdriver. Now this is captive. This does not come all the way out. So you don't try to, if you're taking one of these apart, do not try to force this out because it will not come out. Um, then we raise the bolt, we start to slide it back. This on top here, this is the ejector. I'm sorry, the extractor. And when it comes back, <coughs> the bullets are, the spent cases are flipped out of the top. And this whole assembly comes out. Now, you'll notice this assembly is not as in beautiful a shape. This one is, is pretty dunked up. And we will and we will fully we will fully uh, strip this down. Uh, not fully, but we'll trip it down to all its big components and uh, and clean that as well. So let me see if I can put this on there better. Yeah. So you can see it's 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 pretty tarnished up. And here, this is an interesting part. So you can see on the the two sides of the bolt face, those two pins sticking out. That's the firing pin. It's a U-shaped firing pin, and it, because it is rim fire, it actually strikes both sides of the case at once to ensure that the case actually fires. So it's a pretty it's a pretty nifty little arrangement. There's a there's a captive spring in here that's the uh, the spring for the uh, pin that drives the 
the uh, hammer, if you will, not the hammer, good lord, brain dead, um, the, uh, the firing pin. So in, inside this mechanism there's a, there's a pin that runs all the way through here and then it hits this firing pin. When we take this apart this will make a lot more sense. Okay. So in, in fact, why don't, we, why don't we do that first? So, okay, so, so this, this is the, uh, the bolt assembly and uh, you'll see on the back here this knurled ring. This knurled ring just basically unscrews and there's a cap underneath here. So we unscrew this. This is, by the way, much harder to put back together than this to take apart. So you take the cap off. Uh, out a little here. Take the cap off. There's a spring inside. So cap, spring. Then there's a cover that covers that whole mess up. And then you can remove the firing pin. And here's the firing pin. And you probably heard the little thunk as I was doing that. And you see this is pretty cruddy but not not terribly horrible it's got a, a basically a flat peen face and this is the actual firing pin so these are the two these are the two uh, protrusions that come through the bolt face and actually strike the the uh, round and th these are cruddy but they're not horrible and then last and least the bolt arm comes back and then if you wanted to I'm sure there's a way to get this extractor out. I'm just not sure if I want to do it. I think you have to slide it one way or the other to get it to come out. But this is in this is in pretty tight, and I don't want to I don't want to risk. Let me just double check and see if there's a pin. I don't see a pin. So I assume that this is uh, this must be being held in by something because uh, the 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 forward part of this is not moving at all. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to take the chance of taking this apart, and not being able to get it back together again. Though it looks like it should, it really does look like it should just pop apart. So we'll just, the rear, the rear part of the pin is is uh, not captive. I, I wonder if this is just frozen in place. No, it does move. So I just, just my weak little human fingers aren't doing a very good job. It feels to me like it's starting to come up. Well, let's rock it back and forth a little bit. I said I'm concerned that if, if there's a if there's a captive pin in there, I don't see any through pins to keep this in. But it could very well be that it slides forward or back in order to get it out of here and I, I definitely do not want to chip the face. So while we're cleaning it, maybe if maybe if uh, while we're cleaning it it'll free up a little bit and uh, that would be better. So, I think that could be because I'm not wearing my glasses and I can see that well. So yeah, that's good. Okay. Alright, so basically when I when I clean small internal parts like this, I usually I don't usually do it here on the big the big bench you my big desk because this is where I do all my writing and all that stuff. This, by the way, is the gook from cleaning the bore. And I, I don't know if you can tell in this picture, but you notice that this is not gray. It should be gray or, or almost black, you know, for carbon fouling and stuff like that. You'll notice that this is, uh, well, rust colored, right? It's brown. And uh, that's going to tell you a little bit about what we found when we cleaned the bore on this thing. So it was not it was not a happy day uh, earlier today when I was cleaning this mess up. So it's kind of kind of sad. So basically, I used a small plastic tray. I think this came from some TV dinner or something like 30 years ago when I used to care about stuff like that. And um, I used that as a just as a place to catch the scrubbing solution. So basically, what I do is I use uh, Birchwood Casey. Now this is the gun scrubber as opposed to the bore scrubber that I use on the barrel. And the object of the game is this is a cleaner, it's like a carbon tet, uh, carbon tetrachloride. And it, uh, I don't know if it is carbon tet, but it, it's like carbon tet in that it cleans and then it evaporates. So you can actually clean stuff. If you have an action that's fouled and you don't want to take the action all the way apart, you can spray it liberally with this stuff. It will free up all the junk that's in there and then you can lubricate it and you're in pretty good shape. So just to give you an idea how well this stuff works, here's the, uh, here's the bad face of, the, of this, uh, this uh, bolt assembly. And I want you to notice this side. 
yes, I had already opened the gun up and I'd actually, because uh, I needed to find out how to take it apart. And I had already done that previous, but you see the difference. This is a cleaned surface and here's the original, what it looked like. So this stuff, uh, be careful with this because it comes out really, uh, it comes out under a lot of pressure and it actually does have a, a uh, what do you call it, a, you know, a little, a little hose that you can use to uh, direct it better. But for what I'm doing, it's better to have it just open. So we're going to spray this down. Now this is really cruddy. If this was a, if this was a, uh, a gun you would just like shot or something, all this stuff would be melting right off of it. But because this junk has been on here for so long, it's not going to do that. So basically what I use is a, a small brass brush and I just go over it with the brass brush to loosen up the garbage. And you can see how well that, that comes off. It comes off very easily and, you know, clean it up. Again, we don't want to over clean it. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to damage the metal. We don't, if there was, if this was a, a, uh, if this was a blued part, we would not want to strip the bluing, obviously, because that, that's a bad thing. So basically all we're trying to do is just get the trash off. Now, another thing that I use for this, if I'm, if I'm concerned at all about, about the, uh, the metal, is uh, a lot of times I will use a toothbrush, but I use a special toothbrush. And those of you that wear dentures recognize this because this is a denture brush. And the, one of the reasons I like it is because of the extra long bristles. So you can get down, you know, you can get down inside of stuff. You can get in between things a lot better with, with this. So it's, and, and this actually works very well also. You know, if you've got, you know, your standard fouling and you're not worried about, you're, you're not uh, concerned about the, uh, the metal itself. But we're going to continue to use the, the little brush, the little brass brush. Since this is a steel part, you know, there's not, see, the stuff dries pretty quick, so you got to get to it while it's still on there just skip right through the polishing of this part and uh, move along to something a little more interesting. Now obviously this, or not obviously, but the uh, doing this strips any oil that was on any of these parts is now gone. So you have to make sure to oil up good after this. I was cleaning this part I could feel the uh, extractor moving under my fingers so I realized that cleaning it was starting to loosen it up and I decided to give it a quick tap with a, a rubber mallet. Gentle tap, yeah. Gentle tap. So I expect this is going to move. Now it's free. Ah, there we go. See, so that's what it was. You had a, once you, once you took off the cap and all the parts that sealed this shoulder, right, you just tap it back and you'll see the hook. So there's a, there's a, and you can see it inside there, there's a hook that captures that. There's a steel pin that captures that. So we got that all apart. That's great. So that's, there's an example of now I can I can use the, the stuff I have in here and soak this little part and get it nice and wet and now I can go after this. Just continue you know, rubbing away on these different parts. Uh, again you'll notice that we use the overspray that's collected in this little bucket to uh, soak the parts occasionally and, and that conserves the, uh, the spray to some extent. It works pretty well. The milling on this is pretty rough. You can see, you can actually see the uh, milling marks, the little semicircular marks from the milling head. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll try to, I'll try to wander it. But that's, that's pretty neat. So we'll just keep going, uh, cleaning off this part. You know, brushing out the various channels. You'll notice that I, I frequently use the rag to clean off the part in order to uh, check underneath and see what kind of progress we're making. Okay, well, let's get the next one. I guess I'll throw the firing pin in there. I, I'm not exactly sure what you would call this. It's not its not the firing pin, but it's the pin that strikes the firing pin. I guess it's a striker in my case. I'm not used to thinking of bolt action guns as having strikers in them, but, but that would be it. It's quite an unusual piece of steel. I mean, with the with, it's got the little grooves here to hold the uh, the spring. You know, the spring rests against the, the, the spring that dr drives the firing pin, or holds those. Let's try this. 
Now, obviously, ah, there you go, have another drink. Uh, if you had a, if you had a vibratory or a ultrasonic cleaner, that would be the thing to do. Would be to strip this all down, throw it in an ultrasonic cleaner, and just let the sound waves do the work. But I am a a very basic collector, and I don't I don't uh, have any specialty tools like that. I'm not a gunsmith or anything, so I don't I don't have the need to have any of those kinds of tools around. And besides, this is fun. I enjoy doing this. Machining this part must have taken quite a bit because there's all kinds of little tapered edges on this side and this side, and there's little notches and cutouts and. You know, the, the bottom of it's flat, the top of it is, it has this, this, uh, this little edge, you know, to help, uh, this goes in a, uh, uh, you know, I think this is where the caulking happens. This is where the piece that does the caulking. So, pretty slick. So we will continue just cleaning off these parts. Uh, you'll notice that these, uh, a lot of these internal parts really aren't that dirty. And that's because their internal parts are not exposed as much to the outside world. There's less chance of them getting wet or, or you know, otherwise exposed to the elements. Alright, so let's take a look at the... This one's going to be a little tougher to clean because it's so small. It's tough cleaning little small parts like that, especially when you use a brass brush with bristles uh, that, are, that are damaged like the one I'm using. Uh, you got to be real careful because those things can stick you in the hand. I've, I actually had to stop a couple of times and pull brass slivers out of my fingers. And believe it or not, the stuff in, the, in this bucket is evaporating the whole time. And we kind of open a window here because I uh, get a little bit of a cunt, a little bit of a buzz from snorting this stuff. It's probably bad for you. I'll probably, I'm probably cutting two or three weeks of my life off doing this, but you know, they'll be at the end when it's really crummy, so crubby. So. You know, who wants to live forever anyway? Oh, here we go. We get some uh, serial numbers showing up. 641. There were numbers on some of the other parts. Actually, there's a uh, there's a serial number on the outside of the gun. I should check. And all the parts that I saw when I was looking at the gun externally all matched. So that was that was pretty neat and interesting. Cleaning off this cap has revealed a, a little bit of uh, pitting. And now, so this this looked better when it was cleaner. I mean, when it was dirtier, obviously. But now you can see the pitting in the surface. You know, a little bit of light pitting. So that'll be good. We'll oil that up good, and that'll stop that. That'll stop that from continuing. We really don't have to clean the spring up real hard. Usually, spring steel is very hard and doesn't require a lot a lot of cleaning. It doesn't attract a lot of rust. Uh, and then we we uh, clean the bolt mechanism. Have to get down there. So. Uh, uh, facing surfaces that perform the caulking function and all that and we will get those all cleaned up. We also notice a little bit of rust on this one as well. A little bit of rust right in here. You can see there's a little bit of rust there. Now this this uh, this solvent does not work really well against rust. It's not meant to dissolve iron obviously for obvious reasons because you pour this down your barrel. Um, so what I typically do with stuff like that is uh, grab a little penetrating oil, get a little bit of penetrating oil, and let it go to work on the rusty spots. Gun oil is good, but penetrating oil is better. Let that, let that set. Let's do the job. Now we're going to go to work on the elevator. Now this is the elevator assembly. You saw this come up. Uh, do this here. You can see this is this is the spring mechanism on it. And when it's in the gun, it sits there like this. These two plates. This is the bottom. When you look at the bottom of the gun, this is what you see. When you bring the bolt back, the bolt pulls on this lever. And this lever kicks this box up, and this box is the elevator, or what they call the elevator, and all that. So this all goes in the in the base of the gun. And this is this is dirty, but not horrible. So we'll again we'll throw some cleaner on it, and see how it goes. 
So we just move along cleaning the elevator and the uh, lifter mechanism here. Uh, nothing spectacular going on. These are these parts move a lot inside the gun, so they do tend to stay clean. They they break away from the crud uh, pretty good. And uh, again, we don't want to overclean them because you know we want to keep the original patinas and we don't want to damage whatever bluing uh, is on the metal. Again, we have the, the 641 stamped in the metal. So all of these, this appears to be, it's, it's really unfortunate when we get to the end and you see how bad the barrel is. It's really unfortunate that this is messed up so bad because it is, appears to be an all parts matching gun, matching number gun. But I can see why the guy at Tulsa let it go so cheap because it was, it has not been maintained. And uh, as a result, it, uh, would lose a little value. There's an interesting, uh, there's an interesting uh, manufacturer's mark in here. There's JM. Pretty neat. Don't know what it stands for. I'll have to do some more research. That's part of the fun. I just love old guns because there's always so much to to learn, and and I'm I'm pretty new at it, so I'm learning quite a bit all the time. And I just love looking up. Oh, that's what this mark meant, and that's what this. You know, here's a stamp from an inspector. Here's a manufacturer's mark this mark means that it was proofed or it was accepted by the military or you know something like that so I really I really enjoy uh, that kind of stuff I don't have a very good memory so I don't remember it for very long but uh, basically when I do a oops uh oh <laughs> that's interesting Yeah, that just fell out, so that's okay. So, you know, that's a good thing to know. I didn't realize that that was unscrewed. It's too big. I need a smaller tip. I said I wasn't going to take apart. I didn't. I didn't mean that it wouldn't just fall apart. Actually, let's clean underneath it a little first. All right, we've got the opportunity. Yeah, see what's happening is that that spring is what held that piece. If you when you take that screw out, this whole piece lifts off if you back the spring off. But I am not doing that because I don't need to. I got underneath it pretty well. Here it comes. I guess I will take it off. So having that screw fall out was a pretty fortunate happenstance. It lets us get inside and, and uh, clean out some of these uh, rubbing surfaces, uh, these, these action surfaces of the parts. And that allows us to do two things. It allows us to check for uh, rust or uh, significant wear and also allows us to get in there and oil them up good you know, for the future and keep them uh, nice and oiled up and ready to work. Now we'll oil them up and begin the assembly of the uh, elevator and the lifter frame. I couldn't get the hold pilot when that was in the down position, so I had to force it into a position. Now I can get the screw in. Now see, when I first took this apart, that screw was almost all the way out and I didn't even know it. So another good reason to take these apart is to make sure you know they're all put together properly. There we go. Okay, so we can dust that up a little bit. I am over oiling it. Please don't complain. I'm doing it on purpose because I don't know how long it's going to be before this guy comes back out of the out of the uh, what do you call it? And there's how it comes out again. I will wipe that down a little too much. There's over oiling and then there's drowning the poor little bastard, so get some of that out of there. But at least the parts are oiled up now. Oiled up nice. Okay, so there's the elevator mechanism. That's all done. Oh, I have to clean this screw. And now 
now we will I'm using this little this little spritz bottle um, I like these spritz bottles a little better because they don't you don't get as much overspray with them and the other thing I do is I take some of the oil and I put it in a, a small uh, <coughs> small bottles that have almost these needle-like things on the top and that's great if you're just trying to get uh, delicate work in and I got these from a, a pawn shop gun store for I think I paid like 75 cents for a bottle so I bought four or five of them and gave some to my brother-in-law because he's a good guy okay so now I think we're going to replace the, the extractor and if I recall correctly the extractor went this way so we'll drop it in let it run forward yeah see this is much looser than it was before and that's probably correct it's probably the way it's supposed to be but, uh, yep so there we go and it's a good question so now we're going to put the firing pin in now what holds the firing pin in is when you take the striker rod the striker rod comes all the way through and sets right in here. See, there's actually a hole drilled in here, and it sets right in there. That's why these are actually also not that hard to convert to center fire. You can take and drill a hole through the front of the bolt face, and then use actually a drill bit as a uh, as a uh, firing pin. But I don't really want to do that with a with a with this firearm because I'm uh, I don't like ruining you know firearms that are that are correct and intact so if maybe someday if I can get this another copy of this bolt assembly I will drill one out and see now something else I'm going to do is the bolt face is still pretty crappy I probably wouldn't look like I brushed it down so I'm going to give it another I was so uh, concerned about the nooks and crannies that I forgot to actually clean the bolt face. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And again, we'll redress that. Okay. So, back to the extractor. Pin forward. Throw it in there. Okay. Then we'll put in the firing pin. Slap the pin in there. Now I don't recall which way this goes, so I'm just going to try one and then we'll figure it out later. Uh, nope, that's wrong. Get this in first. So this guy goes in first. when the the reason I did that is because the extractors and when when the bolt is up the extractor should be on the top so that's how I know that goes in that way and if it's not the way it goes I'll I'll shut the camera off and change it won't tell you guys <laughs> but anyway so put that in and the other guy keeps on so so if this is up this I'm going to assume this bottom edge. Usually there's a there's a place you catch this when you uh, when you uh, when you push the gun forward. There's usually a spot on the bottom of the receiver. So I'm going to assume that this large tail goes down. That may be wrong, but we'll see. I keep dropping the the firing pin out of it because it's not captured. There we go. Okay. okay. Now here comes the hard part. So the spring, and I laid the spring face down. So the spring sits in the on the grooves. You see the, the grooves in the uh, striker, and the pin sits in those grooves. And then this mechanism, this cover, just covers the spring assembly. And now is the work. Oh, wait a minute! I have not been 
bad me, I have not been lubricating my parts. So I'll try it again. Get in there. I'm sure, I'm sure I lost my firing pin again. There we go. This is, by the way, there's no there's no spring on the firing pin. The firing pin is free floating, but it's so small that you don't have the problem with the slam fires like you do with some of the other guns that I've worked on. Okay. This. Again, you don't typically over lubricate one of these because on a center fire, you know, the crud gets in there and you know it's it's a bad thing. So again, when we're in the up position, I assume this is going to go like this so that this tail rides on the bottom as we're bolting it in. Could be wrong, but that's what I think. And we'll oil, we'll over oil this and then we'll wipe it down afterwards. So this goes this way. Get the spring, get the spring in. And then this cap. Now the problem is you have to push down on this, but you don't want to damage the the uh, extractor. So you have to be kind of careful. Now what, what I usually do, I've got another table where I can rest this and put the whole thing together. But we'll take a quick quick look at this and see if I can get it together. Oh, I did it. I got lucky. Must, must have been watching the Hulk from Thor Ragnarok the other day that uh, gave me the excessive strength to do this. Oh, and there's a, and there's a, there's a mark on this too. N N4. I don't know what N4 stands for, but there's another little mark. Pretty cool. Okay, so we have our assembly all put together. Now I'm going to wipe off the excess oil that's all around the outside. And we have our cleaned assembly. And I think it doesn't look too half bad. It came out pretty good. And the thing's moving like it should. The extractor's in place. Life is good. Same thing here. We've got our second assembly, our elevator assembly, ready to roll. Spot there we missed. It's like washing a car, you know, somebody else always walks along and says, oh, you missed a spot. But that's okay. All right, so now we have our, ele and our elevator assembly is, is complete. Okay, so now, I'm going to stop this video and start a new one as we work on the main part of the gun. Okay, so we're going to we're going to start taking apart the main part of the firearm, and I was kind of uh, you know, debating whether to take the wood off first, but I think I'm going to leave it together and see if I can remove the trigger assembly because that's the only other internal action assembly that that uh, I can get at, and when I turn it upside down, if I leave it all together, I can uh, I can reach these screws, and I don't have to use a I don't have to use a uh, uh, a vise. So uh, it's too small. Again, whenever you whenever you uh, take screws off of a firearm, always use the largest hollow ground tip that will fit in the in the radius of the screw and in the slot of the screw without scratching the, the surrounding surface. So we'll fast forward with me uh, removing these screws. Uh, the rear screw is into the wood so it comes out real easily. The more forward screw is uh, all the way up through into the upper tang and takes a little bit more work to get it out. This forward tang bolt went all the way up through to the upper tang. And this one just goes into the wood. So with the two screws removed from the lower tang, uh, it's still not obvious how to, the, the uh, stock comes off, so you'll see me flipping the gun around trying to figure it out. At this point in time, I make a horrible decision and uh, we'll just continue along. <laughs>
fact, it's really weird. It pin actually looks like it might be made out of wood. I buggered it. Now that was that was just too sharp a point, and it, it fractured the uh, it fractured the pen. It is a wooden pen. I'll be damned. So I'll have to figure out something to do with that. So does that mean there might be another one here? I don't know. Should have left it alone. Uh, the weird thing is, I don't see. Oh, yeah, it is moving. Okay. I can feel the the rear tang of this starting to lift out, but it's gonna. It's in there pretty hard. I'm gonna clean up some of these tools and get them out of the way. So I can go after that a little harder. Ah, okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. So now we have the we have the buttstock off. Uh, very good. Set that aside. And now we can see the trigger mechanism. You can see there's a leaf spring here. The trigger just rides up and down. This is the sear. This is the catch for the sear right up on the top. So not much else going there. Good. We get that apart. Other than buggering up the wooden pin. That's just strange. I wonder why they did that. I wonder why they used wood for that. But uh, my own fault. So be interested to see. I should be able. I'll be able to get it back in there. But there'll be a little nick in it when I when I. You know when you look at the top, it'll be. Uh, defective. Okay, so that's the rear. Let's take a look at the front. So the front has a barrel band with a screw, another barrel barrel band screw, and there's a, there's another key. This is very similar to the, uh, the key that was in the uh, holding the bolt in. So that's pretty straightforward. We'll be able to get that out pretty easy. So let's go back to work with the screwdriver. Okay. Side. Try it in. So we'll do the first barrel band up here on the front. Hopefully we don't need our punches anymore. This is part of this mechanism. Right, so here is a ouch. I got bit by the uh, by the front sight, which is not a shielded sight. I'm gonna split across there. That was painful, but no big deal. And that comes right off in front of that. Turn it over. Why? Why they put them on two opposite sides? That's kind of weird. They usually don't do that. Now this one, we should just loosen it up, and there's a spring, sort of like the one that was on the other gun that I did. Only this one is in in good shape. So again, that that band comes right off. So. So, front front assembly screw, rear second band, and if I was to if I was to take this off, you would find a pin underneath this end of the spring down into the wood. Now, the last thing, in there. Uh, the last thing we need to do is remove the drift off this cross pin, which ought to be this ought to go through the uh, receiver. So it ought to be like a recoil lug. Let's get a small little punch. Yep, that'll work. Of course we need a, a block of wood, which fell off the table. Throw the guy on here, soften it up a little bit. our 
our key is coming out. You can see it popping out the other side. I don't know if this one is captive or not. But needless to say, I'm not going to. It feels captive. So now let us see if this will move. Yep. And then we'll take it gently forward. Okay, here is our stock. Here is the business end of the uh, uh, magazine, the internal magazine. Looks like it has a, yep, it's got a, a screw in that holds this plunger, the follower, right? I guess that would be a follower. So let's set that, set that aside and take a look at the metal parts here and see what we got. You'll notice I I clean up and move stuff around quite often and that's because I have a tendency to, to break things. I'm actually bleeding. Oh well, that's good. A little blood's good for the soul. Okay, so uh, we're really not going to get this too much further down. So I'm going to spray this off a little bit and uh, then put some lubricant in there. Again, here's our trigger mechanism. You can I don't, let me bring that up where you can see it. So the trigger, I can't do this backwards, sorry. The trigger, see how it moves up and down? And then you've got this the trigger spring here. Yeah. Here, you've got the trigger spring. And if you looked underneath, or on the top, I guess, you could see the, the uh, sear moving that would release the bolt or the, the firing pin. Or the striker. Striker, I guess try to be consistent with our terminology. It would release the striker, which would strike the firing pin, which would hit the two sides. Um, so, the good news is, this barrel is in excellent shape. There's no pitting or rust. I mean, there might be one or two little tiny dits, but there's no pitting or rust on this barrel. So this barrel is in excellent shape on the outside. So this gun and the, uh, the rolling block that we had, the rolling block looked great on the inside and was pitted on the outside. This one is pitted and disgusting on the inside and looks great on the outside, so you can't win. But that, that is the reason I wanted to take this apart was to check for pitting uh, in, this, in this firearm. And here, uh, you can see here, this notch. This notch is where that lug went across to hold this in. So that's actually more a recoil notch than anything else. But it also kept these slide, keeps the stock from sliding forward as the stock is captured in this cup. So, so doesn't, not much to do out here other than give it a good spritz and uh, maybe a little bit of a, uh, a walk with the, the brass brush and then oil it up, the, in, the insides. So, let's take a look at this. Uh, I, I can barely see in there, so I know you're not going to be able to see in there, but we'll just, we'll just liberally try to get as much crud out of this as we can. Now we fast forward through the standard spray it, scrub it, spray it, scrub it, you know, trying to get... Uh, as much of the outside crud and, and try to work on the inside as much as possible. We heavily spray the inside since we're not able to reach it really well with any of the tools that we happen to have. But uh, that's basically what we're up to. We're just uh, doing the standard spray, scrub, repeat. I'm wondering now if that, if that pin actually did anything useful because it looks like yeah, if you if you look at where the hole is for the pin, right, and you look here, there's there's nothing in the way. I didn't have to take that out. That's a shame. But it doesn't look like I actually had to take that out because it doesn't actually do anything. I wonder if there was there was some maybe this is a stock from a maybe they use a similar stock on different kinds of guns or 
there was something else going on here. So I don't I don't know why that hole was there. Because it doesn't it doesn't connect to anything. Isn't that interesting? Oh, that's a shame I dinged it up for nothing, but oh well. That's a life. So now we'll continue cleaning the, the finishing the cleaning of the firearm. We'll wipe off a little bit of excess cleaner. We'll oil up and we will clean off the bolts to do the assembly. And we will put the rear of the stock on in preparation of turning it to our attention to the fore stock and the internal magazine. The magazine actually appears to be made out of brass. So this is all made out of brass. And let us see what happens when we unscrew this plug. I'm going to put my finger out in it so it doesn't shoot across my office. The spring appears fairly light. I'm going to, sorry, I'm doing this off camera so I can put my thumb over it and, and rotate the collar at the same time. Well, I guess I can do it up here. Okay. So here we go. So we have this collar and we have the follower. There's the follower. And then we have this very light spring that comes out. And basically, I was just checking the spring for rust. So I don't see any. Oops. Well, that's really a long, quite a long spring, isn't it? Very thin. So there's no rust on that. So I am not. And I, I sort of expected that because the magazine uh, the magazine's made out of brass. And brass tarnishes, but it doesn't rust. So I'm just going to clean the end of this off a little bit. Where it's got some goop on it from firing. You know, it's got some some powder debris and stuff, but it actually comes off quite easily. I don't want to use my uh, gun scrubber on this because this is made out of brass, and gun scrubber dissolves copper. So, was it copper and tin? make brass? I don't remember, but I'm not taking a chance. Let's put that one. And I can and I can easily wipe this off just with, by using the little bit of oil that's still on this rag. There's a little bit of gun oil on this rag still, so. Wow, even the even the uh, the cross piece has the 641 serial number on it. Isn't that amazing? I'm surprised they, they would go to the trouble of marking a part that small with the serial number of the gun, but I, I guess it's got to be in exactly the right place and the right size and all that. So, so that's the other thing I'm cleaning on there. There's really, there's really nothing else to clean here. Uh, maybe just put a dip of oil on the, the top of that spring that locks the barrel band on. Off here so it doesn't milk the gun up. Excuse me. Cool. Alright. So that's all great. I think we'll just thread this monster back together. Should the top of this. Clean the follower off. Then we have the threaded end cap that keeps the follower captive. Turn it backwards till it clicks, right? Everybody knows that trick. When you're worried about cross-threading something, turn it backwards till it clicks, and then uh, you're good. And there we go. So the bottom, the rear of the stock is uh, ready to put back on. So let's just put this puppy together. Sorry, I had it. I had it. In order to get it together, I had a. You, you almost have to kind of rock it in, and it, I had to take it off to the side and, and take a look at it before I could figure that out. So I'm sorry. Okay, so that's all together. And then we're gonna tap our link back in there. Take our lower barrel band. 
Now these barrel bins are not marked up and down. There is what appears to be a manufacturer's mark in it, but as I recall, they were on opposite sides. The screws were on opposite sides. So this is the forward one. The forward one can only go on one way. It goes on this way. And the screw comes from this side, going this way. So I know on this one, the screw is going to be want to be on this side. Because I remember uh, when we took it apart, we said, oh, isn't that unusual that it's two different ways. Now, when you're sliding these on, make sure you keep the barrel compressed so you don't scratch the wood as you're moving the barrel band. Right, because it, it will it will scratch on you. There you go. I heard the little click where the keeper spring came on. Now we can just tighten this down. Again, this is metal to metal again, so we don't have to worry too much about screwing the wood up. And hopefully this time we won't hurt ourselves putting the barrel band. The front barrel band also has the, uh, the little hump for the rod. I did not get the rod with the gun. So there's a cleaning rod that goes down inside here in this channel. And there's the bayonet lug on the, on the top. So you can, see the, you can see the bayonet lug here at the top. Okay, so let's turn this over. And we'll grab our little guy here. Put him back together. Front barrel bands on, middle barrel bands on. Our lug, our key is in there. Uh, I am going to put the, I am going to put this pin back in. I have no idea why they, why they have it. That's, that's a shame because I've now I've marred the outside of the gun. Actually, it compressed up quite a bit, so it doesn't look quite so bad. I suppose I could put a small piece of wood putty in that. If I uh, if I had to clean it up a little more, I'm just gonna take it in just a little bit more. Not quite, not quite even. There we go. That's even up. Almost even on both sides. There. Okay. All right. So final assembly. So final assembly is the bolt action and the elevator mechanism. take it apart so the extractor goes on the top right so we're gonna oh so first we have to make sure this sorry so of course when the gun when the gun dropped just then uh, when it slipped out of my hands because of course our cover with grease it hit my keyboard and it uh, and it uh, what do you call it and it uh, hit my keyboard and shut off the video so I had to restart the video sorry about that okay so we're, we're gonna put the you have to put these in, in the same order you took them out. So we, we this uh, elevator assembly came out first, so it's going in last. So here's our uh, bolt assembly, and when we put this in, of course the the extractor is in the top because when it comes back, that's it, you know it, it throws the bullet out. So we're gonna stick it in here. You have to make sure this is out of the way, or it won't go in. Obviously, have it on the drink. And we're going to stick it in. Now, most people at this point would say, oh, close the gun. Well, you can't close the gun with this thing in the open position. You, you, you have It has to be inside or the, the firearm will not. You can't close the bolt. So, let's stick, stick that in the way it's supposed to go. And now I can, now I can close the bolt. Okay? But we're not done yet because we still have to put in the elevator assembly. Now, the elevator assembly goes in caddy cornered you have to stick it in underneath there's a there's a little wedge here at the end of the trigger guard and you have to stick it in that little wedge but I think you have to put the elevator in first yeah elevator in first then you push the whole thing flush up against the trigger guard and now I should be able to put the screw in that holds the assembly together
I lost my tip of my screwdriver. And that should be it. So let's pull it back and there's the elevator, sorry, there's the elevator popping out of the top. And you see it drop back down again. Oh, no, it didn't, it didn't drop down until you get all the way in. And you can close it, dry fire it, and that's it. And we're done taking it apart and cleaning it. The only thing I have left is just to clean. Uh, the, the wood here is not real tacky like the other one was. This, uh, this actually has the nicest finish of the three guns. So I just need to give this a nice rub down uh, to take, you know, my, my gun lube and other, you know, sweat and stuff off of here and then oil up the outside of the barrel and and we're done so thanks for sticking with it this was another long one and I apologize uh, but I sure hope you had some fun watching me struggle getting this thing apart and putting it back together it is an incredibly interesting weapon and uh, I'm really glad that I, I was able to pick it up and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if, if it will actually chamber and eject properly some rounds but uh, since these rounds are live I'm not going to do that in my house I'll do that at the range. So, uh, and maybe you'll see a range video. I may actually try to fire this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to add, uh, uh, right now I'm going to show you what the bore looks like. Sorry about that. So let me get this and throw, uh, show you what the bore looks like. Okay, here's some bore shots of the uh, Federally. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's pretty crappy. There is a little bit of of rifling left here. I'm at the muzzle end right now. There is a little bit of rifling left at the muzzle end. And just so you know, I have been working on this thing for hours trying to clean it up and get the rust out of it. And yes, that's the problem. When I first put the patch through it or the brush through it and the goop came out the barrel, it was solid brown, not not dirty gray like you'd expect from powder fouling and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was pretty ugly. So this is what the bore end looks like. Let me see if I can get a picture of the, the back end, which is in much worse shape. Okay, I had to use my lower light bore scope on this again. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, the, the, the front bore of this is really in pretty awful shape. Now you're looking through the entire action of the gun here. So, you know, the bore starts way up here, and we're way back here. But hopefully you can see just how cruddy this thing is. Um, while I'm pretty sure because the rest of the gun is in so much, it's in such, such great shape. I mean, the outside of this firearm the, uh, is really in very nice shape. I'm pretty sure that it's solid enough that I could get a bullet through it. I'm also pretty sure the bullet is gonna wander all over hell. So we, we may try putting one of those bullets through it. Uh, just to see if we can get it to fire, but it certainly would have absolutely zero accuracy at all. And that's okay, because this was really a, a filler gun for me, just one in the Swiss series of guns. This was one of the original Swiss bolt actions. Okay, so to finish up, here's the, the final gun. Uh, I, uh, I did uh, clean up the stock, and it uh, looks a lot better now. Uh, clean that up pretty good. The metal parts of the gun... Uh, came out very well. Uh, very pleased with how this whole thing went. The it's it's a the firearm is in great shape for the uh, for the use that I want to put it to, which is to add to my collection. I am sad about the bore being in, in such bad shape. There is a chance that when I shoot a round or two through it, it may clean out some more of that crud. But basically, it came out very well. I'm very happy with it. And uh, I want to thank everybody who stuck with me for sticking with me on this one. Uh, I know it was a long one, and I will do my best. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll have trimmed out quite a bit of the irrelevant stuff, and I'll stick with the disassembly. Because you don't see a 95% disassembly on something like this very often. And uh, I was willing to take a shot at it because I got such a good price on the on the firearm uh, at uh, at Tulsa. So I was I was willing to take a shot at it and uh, and. Uh, take the risk of taking it all apart and so, uh, the only thing I buggered up was that one that one pin where you can you can still see that it's buggered up a little bit the other side looks pretty good but the uh, that this side's buggered up so uh, someday I'll, I'll drive that out again with a better rod and uh, fix it up a little bit uh, hey gunchannels.com if, if you're a firearms enthusiast if you're interested in, in firearms in general if you're interested in the shooting sports 
if you're interested in reloading, collecting, uh, any of that kind of stuff, gunchannels.com is the place for you. You should be hanging out on gunchannels.com. It's a great bunch of guys, very knowledgeable. Every every conceivable part of, of the firearms uh, uh, genre is covered. You would love hanging out with these guys. So, you know, I hope to see you there sometime. Have a great afternoon, and thanks so much for sticking by.